tips and tricks with using arrows. Again, if you want to join in with this session, please do. So what you'll want, you'll want to get, um, get to the arrows webpage. So I've got a link on the next slide and have your trusty text editor on the ready. So we are going to cover or the, the plan, certainly again, if you've got any questions or queries, let, um, put them in the stream chat. I will look at those and answer them as I see them. But what we're going to do, I'm going to give you a quick overview of arrows, what it is, and then I'm going to run through some tips and tricks that I've sort of discovered over years with arrows and hopefully they'll be useful to you too. And this is based on a blog post that I put out a few months ago. So again, uh, we can sort the link out for that later. So I am going to, for those of you joining on, uh, go to this link and it will bring you up um, arrows. So if you go to the web page, this is what you'll be presented with. If this is the very first time that you've, that you've used arrows, you've gone to the page. So a very brief history of arrows. So this is a tool that my colleague Alistair Jones put together a few years ago and it's a diagram diagramming library. So if you have a look at the GitHub repo, you'll find you've got a library that you can use and you can use it for creating various graph based diagrams. And one of the implementations of this library was this arrows tool here. And what it allows you to do is to very quickly sketch up a graph so you can explore some things, you can put in some physical data and have a think about how you're going to use it. So if I just give you a very quick demo of arrows in action, you'll find that a node appears when you start up. So if I double click on this node, whoops. Hmm. This is exciting. So if I double click on this node, I'll get a, a pop up comes up and on that pop up, I can start to describe my node. So for example, I can have a node type. So in caption, we will put in the, the node type. So I'm going to put in person and I can put some attributes. So we put this in the key value pair styling. So I can do, for example, name, blue, favorite color, red and so forth. And when I do that, I can put some information about this node. And what I can do as well is I can add another node. So let's say I'm going to create another node here. I'm going to put some information. So let's say we're going to do channel name Twitch. And I can sort of fill out more information. So if I want to create a relationship between the person node here to the, this node, channel node with the name of Twitch, I can do that by hovering over the node to get this sort of pinky purple uh, shadow come out and I'll just click and drag, drop it onto the node. And again, same idea, I can double click on the relationship, I can put some information on there. Like that, again, I can add some properties if I want to as well, so why not? We can go crazy. It's Star Wars day to day. May the fourth be with you. So there we go. You can you can attribute out uh, your relationships, your properties, so um, your nodes and so forth. And as you may have spotted as well, I don't have to go to plus node to add a new node. I can hover here, drag this out, and create a new node like that. If I want to change the relationship direction, I can double click and you'll notice there's a reverse button. So you start to get a flavor of what's going on. So I'm just going to get rid of this because I don't need it. So again, you double click, press delete, get rid of that. And you'll notice you've got some options as well. So what you can do is if you click on the export cipher, it'll give you a little code block that you can run in near 4 j browser. And that will, and that will effectively go off and create that data for you in the database. This is really, really handy if you're just getting started. If you've got an idea of what data you want to work with and you haven't quite put your finger on what you want to do with regarding that, you can go away, have a play, and you can take that data and push it into Near4j. So it's very handy for that. And you've got a few other options as well. So you can export the markups if you want to take that and put it in as a diagram in some kind of page, you can do that. 
again you can download the, uh, the the vector graphic and so forth so, you, so you've got some choices there about what you can do so that's a very brief tour of near4j arrows so again it was you know it was meant it was intended as a diagram diagramming tool and this page here is an example of how that library has been implemented so what you may have noticed to begin with is we have this strange thing where it's trying to fit the page and what will happen is as we put nodes in we're going to lose space because it's always trying to fit around the outside uh, size of those nodes so let's have a look at a few tips and tricks that we can use with arrows to make how we work with work with the tool a bit easier including how do we deal with this scaling thing so a quick trick that you can do with the scaling is I like to anchor two nodes in the corners so what I'll do is I'll create two nodes so I've got one here I'm going to pop it up in this corner over here somewhere and I'm going to do the same in this corner so again I create a new node and pop it in the corner and then what you will see is I can now have this whole amount of space to work with without worrying about the screen sort of zooming in so this is very helpful so I'm just going to bring these a little bit closer so I can see what's going on so that's trick number one which is a really cool way of being able to work with the space so the next thing I want to do so let's say I want to start from scratch and I want to clear the scene of what I've got here another thing I can do is go to export markup so you may be wondering why am I looking at arrows in incognito mode I'll touch on that in a second but what you will find is if you're using arrows in your normal browser and you're not going in in private mode or in incognito mode it will store the model that you've been working on so this is really great if you're working with a model you're going to be doing it over a series of days you want to keep going back to it and iterating it so a local cache of that is stored of your model but if you want to get rid of it really really quickly then what you can do is you go to the um, export markup button and you'll notice this edit and export and we have a save button so a quick way to just clear the scene and start from scratch is to go between the two ul tags like so I'm going to get rid of that if i press save we've gotten rid of everything and we've got a nice fresh scene to work with so that's one approach and if you just want to quickly pull something together in arrow so you're very quick and dirty you have no intention of saving that scene you just want to pull something together do something and then sort of throw it away run in incognito mode so that's in chrome or in private mode which is in uh, edge and of course if you're using firefox and so forth you'll all have the equivalent modes in those as well so that's another one now a really cool feature as well i think you can use arrows with is trying to figure out what your data model is going to be so let me give you an example so again i'm going to just put some I'm just going to pin the scene with a couple of nodes so i can see what's going on uh, so let's say for example we were talking about a person called lou and lou is broadcasting on twitch channel so let's say i'm not quite at the stage yet to figure out what the data model is but i do have some example physical data that i'm working with that's going to help me sort of do like a worked a worked example of what's going on and then what i can do is i can do this worked example in arrows i can then take the cipher code from arrows from that worked example and then put it into near for j and then I can run call db.schema to tell me what that data model is. So let's let's do a quick example here. So I'm going to keep the same theme. So I'm going to say I've got a person, person name, Lou, and let's say channel. So broadcasting on there and let's say my colleague Alex is also broadcasting on Twitch and let's say we also have something about well, what do we do with those broadcasts so 
what we'll do is that we'll have videos that are produced from videos that are produced from the switches and we and we take those and we upload them so for those of you who weren't able to watch these live can go away and have a look at the videos later so uh, so we've got the video so we've got a um, media type video And let's say we've got a viewer, so we've got a person here. Let's pick a random person. Let's go for a Dan. Let's, there's, there's someone called Dan. And Dan is view or views. Views media. So he views that video. So what we can do, we can go where we go. Well we know roughly we know roughly what our uh, physical data is so we've got this idea that we've got both got both Alex and let's be a bit more specific let's go name the video video title is working with arrows so we've, we've got our physical data and we're describing a number of things here so we've got some uh, no types of person and they've got different activities so they're either broadcasting on switch Uh, you know, so they're broadcasting on Twitch in the channel name of Neil and we've got some media associated there. So this particular media, which would be the video of working with arrows, so this session here. So that's going to be downloaded from um, this channel here, and then you know, in the future, someone's going to view that video. So we've got some physical data. We're putting together this physical data, and this is helping us describe the journey of our data. So, okay, we've done this. Now what we can do is we can use this to help us figure out what our data model is going to be. So I'm just going to quickly start near for j desktop because I'm going to be using that. I'm going to run near for j to help us figure out the, the data model. So let's have a quick, let's quickly explore. Let's quickly explore what's going on uh, when we look at the export cipher button. So if I click on the export cipher button, you will see that we've got uh, some queries, query data here to help us understand what's going on. So we can see it's going to go off. It's it's creating uh, these variables. So everything in a back tick means that if there's any special characters or something like that, then Cypher's not going to uh, do anything weird or just go, yep, uh, you're, you're using some special, uh, you've, you've got some special reason for using any special characters or or keywords, I'm just going to ignore those, which means you can then use things like numbers as your uh, your variable names, your containers to hold any information from the query, which is what's going on here. And you can in fact use emojis if you want to use emojis as variable names, as property names and so forth. So you can have a bit of fun with that as well. My colleague David Allen did a uh, Twitter thread on his uh, him playing with emojis in that but so that's a conversation for another day but yes that's why you've got the back ticks going on here but effectively it's given us some cipher that we can go away and export so i'm going to do that in a second let me just get desktop up and running so bear with me one moment I'm just going to create a new project Okay, so I've got, oops, didn't mean to do that. Got, got desktop running, so I'm just gonna add a database to this. So, what we're going to do, we're going to take that query, so once it's launched, we're going to open up the browser and we're going to copy that query in. So let's get a copy of this query. I'm going to start the database and then we're going to open up browser. Probably worth mentioning as well, whilst we're waiting for the database to start, 
Uh, for those of you who've had a play with Bloom in the sandbox or you've had a trial key, you can have you can use Bloom now for free in the FJ desktop on your local database. So hey, well worth having a look. There we go, right, we are good to go. So I'm going to open up the browser. And I'm gonna paste my code that I've just copied from just copied from arrows. That goes off and creates it. So we can have a quick look at this data. So there we go. So we've got we've got the data here. We've got these my my two pinning nodes. So I could have removed those. Uh, I've got to remove them. It's fine. I'll show you how to remove those in a second. But there we go. So we've got our person nodes. We've got our channel node. We've got our media nodes. Let me just quickly colour these so these are a bit more friendlier on the eye. So there we go. So that's our data loaded. So now I'm going to go and find out what my data model is. And I'm going to do that by doing call db.schema. And there we go. So we can see we've got we've got our person node. I'm just going to pick a name there to show that. So we've got our person node and our person node either has a views relationship with media or has a broadcasting on relationship with channel and we can see that media is downloaded from the channel so there we go we've we've managed to generate a data model based on the physical data that we were putting in arrows to help us describe what's going on what's that user journey in relation to the data that they're working with so that's one trick uh, another trick you can do as well is you can kind of force arrows to allow you to use more than one label. So let's say, for example, you want to use more than one label. Let's give you an example. So I'm just going to quickly show you how I would get rid of the the nodes. If I go to um, export markup, so what I could do is remember that the first two nodes I've got are my anchor nodes. So I could just get take those two and get rid of those. And if I press save. Oops, no, it's not going to those. Well, another way you can just double click and delete them. But if you can save the markup as well, I think my uh, Chrome's being a bit funny on me. But anyway, so you can get rid of those anchor nodes and then we we'll export it. We're not going to have those two nodes there. But let's talk about multiple labels. So let's say, well, actually, I don't want just a person label. Maybe I also want to have a person and a presenter label if that person's also a presenter or a person and a viewer label if they're uh, a viewer as well. So I mean, there will be situations where maybe you want to have more than one label. So you can do that and then import that into Neo4j. So it's a little bit fiddly. So you're going to want to have your friendly favorite text editor to hand, but let's go through this. So what I can do, I'm going to select these notes and I'm going to put in colon uh, presenter. So that's how we would do multiple labels in Cypher. We would do colon and then the next label. So we're going to do that here. And I'm going to add a viewer label for Dan. Like so. So we've done this. I'm just going to go to browser and delete what we've got in there. So we're starting from a clean slate. So again, I'll go to export cipher. Now remember we talked about the back, tip, back ticks. So out of, um, sort of out of the box, uh, arrows uh, won't deal with multiple labels. So it's not going to give you cipher code that's gonna manage multiple labels. But you know how we talked about anything you've got within back ticks, to, uh, back ticks effectively is fair game so you can have anything you can have crazy characters in there you can start with numbers and in this example here you can use colons between uh, between your labels which if you didn't have the back ticks neo would go okay that's two different labels for that so what we're going to do is we're going to do a bit of a cheat and our cheat is basically going to be with our trusty editor is to go through and find all of these back ticks and remove them so let's do that. I'm going to copy this all. 
And then I'm going to bring up my trusty editor, which of course is going to be Notepad because I love Notepad. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a replace. So what I'm looking for, so the first thing I want to do is deal with this. Oh, I've inadvertently put an extra back tick in there. Um, so what I want to do is I want to take this whole thing here. So I want to look for that and then replace it without the back tick. So I'm going to take that and I want to replace it with space colon. The leading space Sorry, I think my uh, signal went a bit funny there. So you want to remember to keep the leading space in there. So you notice it's space colon. So I've got done space colon back tick and I'm going to replace it with space colon and I'm going to replace all of those. And now I also want to deal with these back ticks here. It's the same idea. I'm going to do back tick space open curly brace and I'm going to replace that with space curly brace. I'm going to replace all of those. So when it's a small data set like this it's not really a problem but if you've been really working on that arrows diagram and you've got loads and loads of nodes and relationships and things in there then you're going to really be appreciative of the find and replace functionality of your text editor. So quick visual inspection so we can see now that our, where we've got multiple labels all of the back ticks from those have been removed. So let's copy and paste this into browser. So let's do this. And if I run this, oops, what have I missed? I know what's happened there. I accidentally remember that back tick that I thought I'd put an extra one in. I'd accidentally removed it. Next, this is all good. So, going to run that query. Excellent. And again, we can do match n return n. And you can see we've brought in our data. And if I click on each of these nodes, you can see we've got the multiple labels applied to those person nodes. So that's a tri another trick you can do as well if you want to try and incorporate multiple labels because that's what you're working with in um, arrows and you want to now bring in and import that into Neo4j. That's a trick you can use. So that's been a pretty uh, short and sweet session on working with arrows.